¿Qué pasa, campeones? Welcome to the Churros y Tácticas Podcast. No, I can't do better than that. Uh, look at me. For those that are seeing the video version of today's pod, if it looks like there's a 40-year-old man on the right side of the screen with bags under his eyes and barely able to slur his words out, it's because there's a 40-year-old man on the right side of your screen that is ba has got bags under his eyes, barely able to talk. Kian, today's my Sunday, and I'm uh, awaiting, or, or a work week is awaiting me of seven, potentially nine consecutive straight days. I just came off of a three-day weekend bender. It's uh, a public holiday. Feliz San Juan for everybody celebrating uh, Saint, Saint John, would it be? Yeah, right, San Juan. Uh, it's a lot of fun, a lot of firecrackers. A lot, so it's been a lot of late nights, and... Um, Anyway, Kian was like, you're doing the intro. I thought he would be doing it. And this is about as much as energy as I have. Despite it being Friday the 24th of June, we're here not just for our patrons, we're here for everybody. Because it's been a long time that Kian and I haven't been together on the pod. So welcome back, Kian. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself to uh, those listeners that maybe have joined since <laughs> you've been gone and are not familiar that this is a, a duo a two-way pod. Welcome back, boy. Uh, you should have done the fucking intro, basically, is what I'm trying to say as well. I'm never doing an intro way again. Too long. I'm never doing an intro again. I can't. I can't after what... I, but now we know what you're capable of. There makes no sense for me to ever do the intro. This is what you were born to do. You're amazing at it. It's a strength. I can't... And there's no way I can ever do it justice. And I'm really disappointed that you didn't do a good one today because uh, all these excuses, I'm tired, I'm tired. Let me ask you a question. Do you think Dr. Dre goes up on stage and just slurs his words. And at the end, he's like, thanks for coming out. So sorry, I was tired. It's my Sunday. There was firecrackers. It's St. John's birthday. I don't think so. If you want to be one of the greats, well, so you got to come in. To you got to dig deep. You t I, uh, I didn't expect it, in all honesty. In, in fact, I forgot even to put out a poll. I was like, do you want Kian to come on with a freestyle? And I didn't... <laughs> Put that poll out on twitter but if, it, it would have been predominant it would have been obviously predominantly yes the vast majority of us were hoping that you would come with a freestyle with the hate and bring something to this but i mean listen that's being said thank you dude it was really nice to hear and i love and i enjoy doing it i hope you guys enjoy listening to it well the least you can do after putting out an episode about barcelona's handball title is to at least do the greatest Which intro, intro we've ever heard it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to balance whatever that propaganda was. Also, pe people are asking, what, what, where are the 45 titles? We're confused about that. What are they? I, uh, well, then they should listen to that podcast because uh, unlike you assuming that the entire podcast was uh, about the handball team. and that I couldn't even title, post it on Managing goes, Madrid you, you, because you it was... It, it, you I knew that. I, I already assumed that. I was like, he's not going to do this post. And, and, and that's why I just had fun with it. I, I said one thing about the handball team. So for those that listen to the episode, please explain to this man where the 45 European Cups come from. It's from five different sections it's Barca Femini the football team the basketball team the handball team and the futsal team and I'm forget. I think the roller hockey so six sections yes Ro roller hockey <laughs> roller, roller hockey. hockey with with 22 with 22 European cups baby you should listen to the pod it was fun we had fun if I'm Florentino know, if I'm Florentino I'm, Perez I'm putting out a roller hockey team as soon as possible to get to catch up to those titles <laughs> 45 European Cups. Listen, that I had to put, you know, that clickbaity title in there. And at the end of the day, it was a fun pop. It was a fun pod. We went through the different sections, what they have won, where Madrid still needs to catch up. Uh, so you guys are beating us only in football uh, and basketball and basketball and basketball and basketball. And basketball. Which congratulations and and I, I gave I gave congrats to uh, I, I bigged up Madrid back basketball team beating Barca, which again, not that you would have noticed. You see, you, you tweet more about me than you do kind of like uh, follow Real Madrid sections, I feel. That was a 1-1. One, one. The series It may was seem like that, that, but I'd say it's about the ratio is probably 2 to 10. For every 10 Real Madrid tweets I put out, there's two tweets of bullshit on churros <laughs> to dig, take a dig it at you. It may seem like a lot, but it's probably 20%. But no, the reason I do it is because 
I'm sometimes oblivious. I'm floating through life and I'm focusing on Real Madrid. <clears throat> and even the stuff that I should know about, I don't know about sometimes. Like, you know, you're bringing to my attention, hey, big basketball game. Hey, Barcelona are about to um, win the Euro League or whatever or win the Spanish League. Um, so, and then you bring it to my attention. <laughs> Only to get beaten by Madrid. <laughs> and, but, then, but then we win. And I'm like, well... <laughs> shit, he brought it to my attention, gave me shit about it. Now I have to to like bring this up. Like this is the one thing you were clinging to. I mean, it the one that I think was kind of fun also was. I mean, I knew about it, but Barcelona heading into that Women's Champions League final as well, you know, and the fact that Leon won that was also great. I mean, there was nothing left for you to. Not, well, that's not true. You had the handball. There was. There's always something left. Handball I feel like, and, and futsal. And futsal. The futsal team won the Champions League. Yes, and the handball teams won the Champions League. I feel like if if you if you dig deep enough, every year you'll find something that you can cling to. Like next we year, do. it'll be we like do. Real Madrid has won the Club sections. World Cup. Next year, Real Madrid will have won the Club World Cup, Champions League, La Liga, Copa mm-hmm. del Rey, uh, Super Cup, <laughs> Women's Women's Champions League, Euro League basketball, and then you'll just find something like, oh, but hey, me and me and Lolo just play PlayStation. And we beat Real Madrid on easy mode. We won. <laughs> it's something. It's something. <clears throat> what? It's good for you. It's good to be back with you, man. We missed you. I hope uh, you, we've likewise. been enjoying your travels. We've been enjoying your travels, following the sceneries, um, the different places you went. How was it for you? Family? Great. Just was very... It, was it- was it like, have you seen those um, movies with Chevy Chase, the Lampoon? Yep, my entire like, childhood. Right. Uh, right, there was right. a few of them. My favorite one is the one they go to Vegas. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't think um, I've seen that one. Oh, you know? that's a great or one. It... Yeah, yeah. Mm. And his son goes down to, to sneak, sneak away and pl- play some of the slot machines. He ends up like being a, a fan favorite of the mafia. And he goes and he becomes like this high roller. Yeah, it's an incre- incredible, incredible one. Um, oh. it was good, you know, just family, it, it, it was just like that actually, but maybe not to that extent because my kids are like four and two and they're not 17 and 15, which is the day I kind of dread because, you know, I, I'll be, I'm sure they'll be out of my control and doing stupid things by then. But for now they're nice and innocent and cute and they run around and they, they play with each other and they ask questions and they want to go and get ice cream. And I love it. It's a really, really fun time to be a dad, as, as you know. I mean, it's, uh, it's special. So, yes, uh, I'm, I'm not taking it for granted. A lot of I've, t- I've spoken to a lot of people and I'm curious to know what your thoughts on this as a dad as well. Because on one hand, it's a difficult phase. Um, you know, and in my case in particular, everyone's going to have different experiences being a parent. Um, Having two boys who are this young and too close and so close to each other is challenging. You know, they're not the type of people you can necessarily put together, put down, and say, "Do this." I'm going to relax. They just they're constantly on the go. They have a lot of energy. They want to do physical exertion. They want to run and climb rocks and climb trees and climb climb dangerous things and touch dangerous things. It's hard. It's a hard phase as a parent. But I've spoken to people who have two kids and two two boys even and they've told me you're in the hardest phase but you're in the most special phase don't take it for granted and i really have taken that to heart and uh really enjoyed my time with these these kids so didn't didn't know if you want to have any thoughts on that though in terms of the yeah, phase I think it's the, hmm. yeah it's i think it it's it's a phase where education you know you're really trying to educate your kids the best way possible and set them up uh you know for their uh for their latter years let's say their adolescent years and eventually adult years and and of course the base these early years are so important but at the same time you have to enjoy it as well and let kids be kids you know so uh, i'm not somebody that's necessarily overly protective and uh, i i i very much enjoy kind of going into their world and just taking part in all the goofiness and stuff and i think it is uh, uh, and i'm i would like to think that i am very aware of the moment in that sense and appreciate being you know the their 
universe really right i mean between my wife and i you know that's now is the time where the kids look up to you they listen to you that you they want to be with you all the time they want to play with you and that as we all know once you become a teenager that definitely goes away because then friends become the most important you know opening like leaving the nest little by little and, and becoming your own person in this crazy world so now is really a time where even though it's exhausting and very tiring at times and it can be heavy and draining and you want to just we had a weekend last week where my wife and i managed to get away for our anniversary and leave the kids two nights with my parents and it's this newfound freedom you know where you're that you're so deprived of where you're just able to i i started two books in in you know, in the course of three days so it was uh um, like writing two books i haven't done no no reading man uh, reading well still cool. writing two books. i was like wow and, uh, Diego, just dropping that <laughs> dropping it down like that casually um but uh yeah i it's it's super enjoyable at the same time you know i miss them and, and being around them uh at this point in their lives between you know my daughter's three as you know kian and lorenzo seven and um them two together they're just a very funny couple the things they ask and how they say things it's it's all really cute adorable and just heartwarming and melting really that's awesome. Yeah, you're doing it the right way, by the way, because all the science shows like you got to let kids be kids. And there's a lot mm. like you got to avoid every single ounce of trauma that can possibly arise. Any moment mm. of sadness or, or anger or anything that could happen in front of them that it could literally change their life. And so like the, the way to unlock their creativity and set them up for the future is basically let them be them. Don't get angry at them ever. Don't yell at them. Um, understand that kids have to go through their own path just protect them and guide them and teach them that's it uh all right that's it do you want to talk about football what or is no? there to talk about? nothing <laughs> no i'm nothing. joking well, I, apart nothing, from lewandowski absolutely. and yeah i mean it's actually really slow in real madrid world shots being fired yeah. right well i mean you guys just had two great signings that was like two weeks ago though really starving for yeah. content now it's just that's Come on, we're league league done, Champions League done, uh, key players in done. Let's go, Mbappe not coming. Uh, <laughs> we don't even need done. him. We don't even need him. Yeah. We're set up. We're good. Um, listen, actually, it's funny because I was going to do. I don't know if you spoke about it on the podcast you did, but you and I had a kind of a miscommunication last podcast because I thought you were still away with your wife and that I was going to do the podcast. So I asked the patrons for questions and uh, they yeah, submitted yeah, questions. Funny. Yeah, they submitted questions and uh, and then it turned out you were back. So you just recorded the podcast. But then there's a few questions that were just left on hold because of that. So I thought we could take at least a couple of them today. There's, another, there's a question for you specifically as well because there's always questions for you because no one really cares about me, especially after now you, especially after these intros you've been doing lately. Now it's like, is Keon even needed? Is he is he necessary? Is he holding is he holding the podcast you back? You are. I am. I think I am. Maybe I should step away for a little. No, bit. I don't know. No, bro. We are going places. We are. This is just. We're just. We're we're busy molding and shaping this pod into it becoming just the right recipe for churros y tacticas. I like it. I'll piggyback uh, off that. And I'll piggyback off your success. I'll mooch it. Um, you are you are a key key element, key ingredient. So unfortunately, I think the first question directed to you actually is because it's the free episode. I don't know if you're allowed to answer this. Should I read it anyway? Mm. And then you can you can direct me. Yeah, sure. All right. Sure, sure. Our patron C, who's a patron over on patreon.com slash churros y tacticas, where you get one exclusive episode per week where Diego shares all of his inside info. Um, kind of kind of sarcastic, but kind of not. Uh C says, hey, Diego, what can you comment about the recent post of how much Barca owes from previous signings for over 125 million euros? Yeah, so I checked out the link that was uh, added with this question. And, um, <clears throat> well, two main things came to mind, really. Uh, and first of all was... Why is this coming out? Why are these kind of news bulletins going out? And I know a lot of our listeners might uh, 
you know, brand me as uh, being a victimista, playing the victim here. But it does seem that at the moment, uh, bullying on Barca is kind of easy. It's kind of like the thing to do online and on social media. It, it, it has been for a while. And when I see these kind of posts, I just think it's they're just trying to add more, you know, throw more shit um, and seeing what, you know, at the wall and see what sticks, basically. Because uh, I'm sure you could pull a list like this for ev- all the clubs everywhere in professional football. Um, and maybe the sports as well. Uh, so what does this say? I'm, I'm sure that this Barca is not the only club that, that owes money uh, for transfers. I'm sure this is pretty standard practice amongst clubs. It actually is. Uh, I, I looked at Valencia, what Barca supposedly owes Valencia for Neto, the, the six, million, six and a half million. But I thought that that was sort of cancelled with the Silicon, um fee as well, which basically cancelled each other out. There's, you know, the, uh, some there from nearly eight million for Arthur, Mal- Malcolm, etc. Pjanic. Look, I, it says nothing to me. It, it says, you know, that this is standard practice amongst football clubs. There's no way that I'm, I can't say for a fact that Barca is the only one. Because I cannot now here show you exactly and say, look at Real Madrid, look at Manchester United, look at you know Juventus. But for sure that this we could pull up lists like this for other clubs. That's point one and point two is that I feel like it's just another. It's like hey, look at Barca, hey, they're ruined, piece of shit, you know, old club, blah 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 blah. What do so, you think? Well, to your point, the the practice of amortization and paying transfers over time is very common among many clubs right almost almost every club pretty much every club <clears throat> i think if if this if what if if this is different it's different because perhaps barcelona are falling behind on some of these payments which i don't know is true or not um but i i did i did feel like maybe this is a good segue to talk about tebas's quotes yesterday mm. Teb- tebas every, every day i just expect to for him to wake up, flip a coin, and say Barcelona can't afford signings, or Barcelona can't afford signings. Every day it's going to be he's just going to flip a coin and say some random bullshit because he feels like he has to. Maybe he's answering questions. I don't know, actually even know the contest of yesterday's quotes. Did he just wake up and speak into a microphone and say Barcelona can exercise financial levers? I don't even know what that means still. Um, but mm. on that note, and now Bayern are playing real hardball with Lewandowski. You and I have talked and about also, yeah. yeah. You and I have talked about Lewandowski. We had like an entire segment on Lewandowski. So we don't need to talk about it again, but I just thought I would bring this mm. to your attention. This today, uh, <laughs> a report from the maybe not so reliable sport, to put it politely, says that Lewandowski is ready to act if Bayern blocks his transfer to Barca. Mm-hmm. And he does not want to go to preseason with that team. Uh, right. If you had to put a percentage of this happening, what would you put it at? Like of Lewandowski being a Barcelona player? So hard. I, I honestly don't know. I, I have no idea. I have no idea. I think it's... Um, there. You have two parties that really want to make this deal happen. It's priority for these two parties, you know, to make this happen. And you have one party that is playing not just hardball, uh, they're also joining into this bullying that I was mentioning before, where Hönes every every given occasion is like, there, if they be in Germany, they'll be you know thrown in jail and fucking been chastised away from the German league. And like, I mean, uh, as if Throwing again, as if Barca is the only club. Yeah, I mean, uh, well, th- this is coming from a guy that spent time in jail because of uh, fiscal fraud. So uh, you know, he must know a lot about Barca's finances. And again, this is as if Barca is the only club club in debt as well you know i mean the, 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 again this is football clubs have debt and barca among let's say the top three teams manchester united real madrid and barca uh, these three teams have been the highest earning um you know clubs in in sports forget football and sports for years now um the revenue that these three clubs make is uh, head in, uh, you know, how do, you, how do you say, head over heels above the the, the competition, the rest, including Bayern, and uh, that means that Barca, despite the debt, is still generating a whole lot of money, 
and therefore among uh, along with these palancas that have now have been approved right these additional um ways where barça can capitalize on their assets be it blm be it barça studios sale of those the 49 percent here uh you know for 500 million the 250 million on uh the the tv rights deal etc you know this uh, these are additional amounts that barça are currently in negotiations and it has to be done quick it has to be done before the end of the month before the 30th of june otherwise uh it will uh you know otherwise it'll be too late so we will soon get more news in terms of what Barça plans to do with BLM and Barça Studios and, and um, getting more money in, in order to confront making these uh, signings. And we will see what, you know, the summer's still long. We will see what, what Barça ends up doing. I find it very hard <clears throat> to put a percentage to it, Kian, not because I don't want to share anything. I just, at, at this point in time, uh, I don't know. You know, you, you're looking at figures that are being reported in a newspaper between one party wanting 30 plus variables, maybe 40, and then the other party won't sit at the table unless uh, conversations start at 50 million. I don't know. I don't know what, what is going to happen. I don't know what, you know, how, how Barca will be able to play the game, like as in how loaded their backpack will be. Um, players need to leave as well. We, of course, have the... The, the mass salarial, salarial, excuse me, still be an issue as well. Um, it's it's going to be a, an eventful summer. That's all, that's all I can say at this point. And I, I think we will see big moves take place. I still think Bayern are well within their rights to play hardball. I mean, it's if they want fifty million to even begin negotiations, then that's their it's their player. He's under contract. They're well within their rights to do that. So we'll they see. Are, where... But why are they so so shitty about it? I mean, again, this is a club that also is, is used to being the big fish in a small pond, and you know, p- poach fucking top players from their uh, the Dortmund and the, the other teams that are surrounding them, and you know, they, they've also gotten they pay for those players. Uh, I mean, look, I... like Thiago Mota, Thiago Mota. Thiago was an opportunity for them when he was in his final contract year with Barca, and he, they got him on the cheap. This is there, there's no foul being committed here. Lewandowski has one year left. A player they got free, mind you. They didn't pay anything for him. Uh, he wants to leave. He, th- he deems that his time, his services, you know, his time with the company is done. He wants to leave. There's a club that is interested and wants to pay money, and that is Barca. Um, why? You know, why are they being so shitty about it? I, I get that. Okay, they can play hardball, sure, but they're being almost like. Uh, immature about it as if they, they're such a victim now and they've never played this game uh you know you know far better than me i'm sure the players that they've managed to sign on the cheap or uh or for free from uh, other clubs in their history as well but they're not doing anything illegal like i mean from no. from, from Bayern's perspective i've, I've always been I, I, okay so for example i really like the way real Madrid run things in that if you don't want to play here you're out don't care who you are. Don't care if you're Ronaldo, Di Stefano, or or whoever. You're out. Ramos, the same thing. Like there was a club legend. Like he started to play a little bit of hardball with his contract, and Florentino was like, "You missed the window. That's it." I like that about us, because the club has always been over the player. And so, when I see things that like PSG holding Mbappe or turning on two hundred million, or Bayern doing this with Lewandowski, I'm like, "Yeah, well, like what kind of culture do you have there?" Players want to leave, and you're holding them against their will. That's dumb. But at well, this... I don't think Varan Varan left when he wanted to leave. He had to stay on for another season before he eventually departed. Mm, I mean, he no. As far as I know, and uh, I've been in touch with. He wanted his... to leave them to. He oh. he he played hardball. Like I, I've I've been in touch with his with his brother a little bit and. Uh, and who was his agent and basically like with him it's like he wanted to he wanted to kind of get a better contract he wanted a new challenge but ultimately he was convinced to stay and then he left on amicable terms like on like and and Riamjo lost him it wasn't like you know stay against your will kind of deal but with 
so anyways, with Bayern and Lewandowski, it was, it's like, if I'm at least in Bayern's position, if I'm at least to see their side of things, they're not signing anyone with whatever money Barca send them to sign anyone nearly as good as Lewandowski. So, and he's one of the best players in the world still, even at his age. So I, I understand, like, why... Why is Lewandowski signing a contract if he's not planning to honor it? This is the same reason I got mad with Harry Kane like last summer when he was like, he he signed this absurd contract with Tottenham which chains him for X amount of years, and now he's throwing a fit and he wants to he he wants to leave. Lewandowski is like, you got one year left, man. You signed it. No one forced you to sign it. No one put a gun to your head to sign it. Like, if you want to. The, the correct way, in my opinion, to deal with this is like, hey, guys, I want to leave. Um, I respect. I mean, like, I love Bayern. I've been part of the club's history now. We've 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 written history together. We have one year left on my contract. Try to move me on. And if you can't, I guess I'll leave next season. And that's it. And if they if, if something like you have to also understand, like, try to put yourself, your clubs, your club in a good position as well. Mm. You know, Hazard was like that with Chelsea too. The way he left, he was like, you know, I'll stay or I'll leave. I'd like to leave, but if I if I stay, I, I'm still gonna play hard for you guys. It's it's all good. Lewandowski is like mad at Bayern because the offer is not good enough for the club, and now he's refusing to play. He's refusing to come show up to preseason. Now, I don't think that's right. I don't like that. Mm. That's where I stand on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you say the offer is not good, you mean what, what Bayern are offering him? No, I mean what Barca are offering Bayern. Ah, okay. Hmm. Like maybe well, Barca feel like that's a good the, deal, the, but what, maybe what, Bayern don't, you know? Well, apparently he wasn't happy as well with the initial offer that Bayern, um, you know, was, was offering him basically mm. to re-sign his contract as well. Yeah, so what are you going to do? Throw a hissy fit now and like? <laughs> well, I don't know, man. I, I, look, I think each each party is looking out for their best interest, and sure. uh, I think it would I think it would be a mistake though for Bayern to uh, to force a player against his will to to stay on. What's the equivalent of has has Barca ever had a situation where the player wanted to leave, but then Barca forced him to stay? <laughs> the most famous one, Messi. Of course. So well, your you your opinion on that is that Barca probably should should have sold Messi in that moment, right? Mm hmm. Yeah. See, like, I I also you know as as much as I like that Real Madrid put the club above the player, I've also I don't feel that strongly about clubs in a way. Like, look. If I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I I guess I can just see some clubs' perspectives in wanting to keep a player under contract who they can't replace. I get it, especially if that club is like Messi, like showed up that year and was amazing, right? Even though he they kept him with him yeah. wanting to leave, like nothing was really things were forgotten pretty quickly. So, like, what is is Lewandowski really just not going to show up? Like for how long? Like how is that? How long is that going to happen? Like it's, it'd be so funny to me if we had like an NBA equivalent of like Ben Simmons not showing up or Kyrie just not showing up over and over and over again, for various reasons. I don't remember that happening in it's football. Happened. Do you? Have, have when it's does it happened. happen? It's happened. Am Th I these kind examples? of things were quite. Yeah, I, I think it was pretty standard practice in the the nineties and uh, early two thousands and stuff. I. Uh, Remember I'm sure players are, I just can't for think both of for both Barca and, and Madrid that kind of forced their signings uh, to happen, you know, to to yeah, basically take a, a an opposing position and kind of aggressive in the stands. Look, the most recent one for Barca was of course Dembélé that he he didn't want to show up to Dortmund uh, practices, and um, but I want to say like like Zizou, Ronaldo. These players, like Juve, was not happy to be dealing for Zizou. I remember in, the, in, the, in those days, and I want to say Zizou for something. I think Nazario did as well with Inter. Um, Juve, <clears throat> Juve did so well after that Zizou deal, though. I gotta say, like, 
they really,、mm. really replaced him like with the best you could replace Zidane with. Like, I mean, they, they use that money super wisely. So that's the case is like if you can get a good deal for like an, at, at that moment was the world record for Zidane, Juve did tremendously well. But yeah, but with you know, Barca's case and Figo, they did not do so well with that money, right? Yeah, and it's, Neymar. it's an, and Neymar, and Neymar. That was a disaster. So it's funny. Dembele is a good segue, by the way. You know, years on from not showing up to practice for Dortmund, don't know if much has changed. He's giving everyone a hard time. Does he just end up renewing with Barca? His agent seems out of his this, mind, at, at right? At a stoplight, he was asked、uh, a couple days ago. I don't know if you saw that video that went viral.、No. They were like, "Yo, the blur, the blur." I think it was in France because why、well, they were speaking in French.、Um, they're like, "You know, you're going to Chelsea," and he was like, "Nah, I'm staying at Barca. I'm good. I'm good there. I'm happy." So <laughs> it's very bizarre. And now the papers are reporting that he wants to stay, but. He or him, he him and his agent, the Dembele,、mm, you know, team Dembele. Let's say they are unwilling to budge from their demands, and、uh, Barca so far unwilling to raise the offer. So I, there's, you know. don't you wish that we could put out a, a universal rule where agents get shit off, like no sign, no more signing fees. Like it should just be illegal to have signing fees and family members getting big yeah, bonuses just- and. And getting strippers delivered to their house and par- parties and all this stuff. Enough. The player gets. <laughs> Diego's、yeah. like, I don't know. The strippers one sounds good, but enough. Like the player should get paid. That's it. And then the player can use his own、mm. money to pay out whoever he wants. That's it. Like these. Yeah. Dembele's yeah. agent. Sorry to say, should has no right to ask for anything, man. He's the agent of、mm. Usman、mm. Dembele, not the agent of, like, you know, Pele. <laughs> you know, know. that ballet. Who is that ballet man? He's a good right winger who's who's showed his brilliance at times and has done nothing for Barca's history apart from bleed money for them and not play, and then not show up to practice or show up late to practice. Who does he think he is? No、yeah. wonder no one's paying his agent. Why would you want to? Like, I actually think if Mbappe had have left for Real Madrid, he probably would have gotten paid at PSG. To be honest, but. I don't. Why is it like I don't blame anyone for not lining up? So that I think that's what happens. Like I think that's why he's probably just staying at Barca. But does that mean Barca are paying the agent fees? That's the thing. That's the thing. Right now, it's a complete standstill. And and PSG, if anything, I mean, we talked about it in the past, but I think now with this news coming out of Neymar, or them, you know, desperate to dump Neymar off at, at at the, you know, first and best given opportunity, mainly because the ultras, right, the PSG ultras. Are demanding that、uh, he be shipped off, and 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 Al Khalifi seems to go out of his way to please the ultras, the fans, the PSG the hardcore PSG fans, and he recently talked about it as well in an interview, you know, where he basically put out a very clear message and and, and to say like, look, we are only going to continue with those players that are willing to sacrifice, you know. I mean, saying everything that that the fans will want to hear, of course, but it's they seem serious in their intent at least to to try to scalp ne- Neymar on the market and see what they can get. In which case, you know, the option of Dembele would of course become a whole lot more interesting, especially seeing that Mbappe is the sporting director there. And、uh, even though that thing that Al Khalifi interview, I don't、funny. know if you read it. You probably did. It was everything. It was just. I mean, I'm not obviously I'm no Madridista, but still, I would. It was just hilarious for how he was saying how the offer was better from Madrid. How I mean, the guy like I look at his neck, you know. In, in Dutch, we say he dicks out of his neck. <laughs> it just means he talks so much shit.、Um, I so he, my he's, he's such a blatant liar. And、um, he's about as as jaw dropping at times as like it, in terms of people who I respect. He's about like as out of like the eight billion people on Earth, he's probably、mm. like eight billion, like in the rankings. <laughs> he just he he seems、right. like and usually like smart people who are just bad people. Who are rich? Or sorry, rich people who are just bad people. At least you can. There's some sense, of, some semblance of intelligence to them. Like, okay, 
they're shitty people, but they they were they knew how to make money. They were smart or whatever. I don't think he's yeah. I don't think he's any anything. He doesn't have a soul. He doesn't have a, a an an ounce of decency in him. And I think he just got rich by just like they they put him there as this puppet who has no idea what he's doing. His quotes are complete nonsense. Uh, he is literally a criminal. And just and they give they put a microphone in front of him and 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 mm. the, what's worse is that he's not accountable for anything. He's there's no the rules yeah. don't exist yeah. for him. Like this uh, this was today breaking from Sky Sports News breaking PSG president Nasser Al Khalifi has been acquitted for a second time after being accused of involvement in bribery and criminal mismanagement in the awarding of World Cup broadcast rights. What's going to happen? Wow. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Nothing. Yeah. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. so Diego, I, I, I like if, if like th- that report about them offering Neymar to Barca. As much oh, as I, oh my god, as much as I hate Barcelona, if you do that favor for them, <laughs> I'll be That's livid. Not happen, man. Like, I, I hope not, for for no. your sake and also just I, it would just insane like that guy is like Dude, there's no way okay there, there there's no way of that happening there's the chavi's priorities are very much somewhere else so uh the the uh, i i would imagine madridistas would love that to happen and uh it would of course take the world by storm with new memes and whatnot but you know that with 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 in particular as well the decision making weighing so heavily in this case with Xavi and less so with the decision makers of the past of uh, the Barca dressing room heavyweights that wanted the return in Neymar in previous seasons and you know because this is it's just been a never-ending soap saga where with this flirting constant flirting between the players Barca players and Neymar oh come back we will we'll want him back with open arms um it's not gonna happen that's just not gonna happen you know um that's over Xavi his like I said his priorities are elsewhere his priorities are very clear and um his priorities are very ambitious as well um I I discussed a little bit on on the pods while you were not here but I don't think uh I can't uh you'll have to listen to those pods and become a patron well uh yeah, I mean, I, it's good. I guess it's good to hear that. I mean, like also the fact, you know, Neymar, I'm sure would be okay with it, but also his friends have moved on. Messi is gone. You know, I mean, yeah. Messi is with him now. Suarez is gone. Right. Um, the team is completely <laughs> yeah. different. So, um, let's can we go back to the questions? And what's really interesting? Uh, sorry, just a, a little food for thought for for those that are interested in in acquiring Neymar services as well. I was recently listening again to, uh, I think it must have been Satan. Somebody was discussing Neymar and they were saying, you know, what are you going to get? Maybe now, if anything, is the best time to invest in a Neymar because we are at the cusp of what? The tournament that all the players, all the players of his generation, the, you know, called it late 20s to mid to early 30s, or want to play in, which is the World Cup, right? Neymar wants to win the World Cup, Brazil, Messi, Argentina, etc. So if anything, they're saying in the short term, it could be a very interesting signing because from now until the World Cup starts, you're going to get a Neymar that is going to be like, okay, this is my last merry-go-round, right? This is the last time I'm going to get myself super fit, super ready, become uh, as professional as I can possibly be, be in the lead up of the World Cup. And then once the World Cup is over, though, then then the big question becomes, okay, what Neymar do you get post-World Cup? And then do you see the Neymar again that is more focused on partying, going to fashion shows and, and, and social media, and lets football become, you know, this clear, uh, call it, you know, second priority in his life or, or just an afterthought even at that point? Because that's what we've seen since from Neymar, really, ever since he left Barca. We've, we've not seen... We excuse me. We have not seen <clears throat> Amon ever reach that full potential that he uh, was setting himself up for, right? When he wanted to leave Messi's shadow and kind of like uh, become the pillar and and, and the star of the team and uh, in a project like PSG, that hasn't happened. It's it's been a flop. It's been an absolute flop. Um, kind of pains me to say, 
but do you remember we did that podcast and we talk, we kind of predicted how Neymar's the end of his career will go and how will age mm. pains me to yes. say, but we were right on our analysis that he's just mm-hmm. going to age mm-hmm. terribly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't yeah. take care of himself the way some other great uh, athletes do at their age. And also, he just is broken physically because he's was frail to begin with. He didn't have much muscle tone. And people in Ligon has just been breaking his ankles for like four years now, however long it's been. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, we should get back to the questions. There's two. Okay. Because this, this, this discussion came from one question. So let's imagine what's left. Actually, we, we actually one of the questions was Tahmid Kalam, our patron, says, "How do these financial levers actually mean that Barca can spend money now? Have they been given all the money up front in these deals? Do we have anything to add on that, or is that a Friday question, or or like, or sorry, a patron episode question?" Well, I think I kind of answered it. I mean, look, these things you you don't necessarily get a lump sum of money up front, no. But but uh, like any big corporation that we're dealing with you know, tens of hundreds of millions. Like Barca still is a money-making machine. So um, the money they have coming in over a monthly, like let's say it's a million a month. And, and if they get a loan for, let's say, or they get money, let's say a hundred million coming, in, let's just keep that around figures, right? Well, that credit that you might get from a bank or loan or from whatever, you know, is, is um, you're making up for that because of the money that you're generating as well. It's not like Barca has stopped becoming a global conglomerate and a business that generates a whole shit bunch of cash. So, um, you know, these, again, these questions with finances, like when Hernes talks about this and that and the other, and how can they still be signing players? And, and well, you know, I, 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 it's, it's, uh, it's easy kind of to, to sing or to target Barca and to ask these kind of questions without being really kind of, I guess, rational about it, the way that business gets done for, with, with other football businesses. And uh, so, I don't know, man. Does, does that make sense? I'm, I'm noticing that I'm having camera problems as well on and off. So the, Yeah, you're gone now. It's just, uh, it just says yes. looking for the phone. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Because you're losing your, you're, you're using your phone as a webcam. Um, Another question, this one is from Luis Berga. He says, I think one of the coolest bits of La Liga news is Luis Campos joining Celta Vigo as a sporting director. Mm. Any chance he turns them into a Monaco or Lille for Liga, uh, or, sorry, for La Liga, do you think there's any realistic chance of a Leicester City type Cinderella happening in La Liga? If there was ever a time for it to happen, it seems like now with Barca rebuilding, Atletico wobbling, and Real Madrid solid but still relying on the old guard. Even if not Salta, do you see any team in the league who are one or two pieces away from disrupting the top three? Well, it's interesting because Salta had confirmed also in their announcement that Campos was actually advising them for months, for a few months. And uh, Campos himself, um, in another report I read that one of his conditions in joining PSG as an advisor was that he would still be able to advise Celta Vigo simultaneously, which is interesting. So um, I, l- I love it. I mean, well, how can I not love it? You know, if, if Luis Campos can bring his scouting acumen and his network and, and pump players, pump um, Celta with really good players that are under the radar that are scouted properly, and turns them into like a Monaco type team, that's great news for the league. So might be more of a long term project because Campos himself apparently is really interested in working with them for years. We'll see how it goes. So yes, I think it's exciting. Um, do you have anything to add to that? I'm sorry, man. I, I have you noticed I dropped off completely. I missed that whole thing. Oh, I didn't know you left. I was I was looking at a, the question of document. The whole Zoom, my, my whole application went down. I was like, oh, no, I'm going to have to restart this Oh, really? You, this just, or something. you left the call and everything? The, it, it just crashed, yes. My, my, my laptop went off Wi-Fi and the application crashed. I'm very sorry. Churros! That's okay. I was mm. just talking about Luis Campos um, and him yeah, joining so, Celta. But he joined Celta, but still being linked to PSG though, right? I mean, he is still, um, yeah, so he's he, on the services of, of parent. Yeah. He's doing both. 
Okay, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, one of his conditions well, in joining PSG was that he still wanted to work with Celta. Okay. Um, yeah, good. I'm, you know, person his experience. I don't know, Kian. It, it, for me, it, it's not like Luis Campos was uh, much on my radar before this whole entire uh, thing started to develop. So I, I'm not really, you know, incredibly familiar with his work. But the fact that he's taken over from uh, um, what's his name, Leonardo, and uh, you know him being so wanted, of course, I think uh, that would mean that his track record speaks for himself so for a club like Phil that now continue to uh, be working with him uh, has to be a good thing for for Celta de Vigo for sure yeah well he's most mostly known for for listeners who are not necessarily familiar with him um, apart from you know joining PSG now and obviously the fact that he's there is also partly due to sporting director Kylian Mbappe who was initially the uh, Campos was the guy who brought uh who basically discovered Mbappe at Monaco. So that's part of the thing he's known for. But he's known for basically the people he he brought in at Lille and Monaco, right? So that great Monaco mm. team um, that, uh, you know, that kind of took the world by storm, made a good run in in Europe, that was a lot of that was down to him. Like we're talking about the Bernardo Silvas. We're talking about the Kylian right. Mbappes. We're talking about the Fabinho's. So those guys, yeah. um, that's Campos takes credit. Like that, that's the stuff he's known mostly for, to being a good scout, kind of finding the underrated our young players, yeah. etc. So, yeah, doesn't seem like so it would again, be a bad day for prompt. Celta. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, there's a second. There's a last part of this question from Luis. Do we see any teams in the league who are one or two pieces away from disrupting the top three? What do you think? <sighs> Mm, too soon. I don't know. It's kind of to me always the same, the same kinds of teams. It's the Sevilla. Yeah, but you're talking, you're talking top three. So top three would be. Let's talk about top four because at this point, it's Sevilla, Atlético, Barça, Madrid, right? Yeah, I mean, but Sevilla were the two points away from being top three this season. Came close, but yeah, sure. Like top, yeah, but the fourth, they're, the not, fourth they're team. not a disruptor. You, mm -hmm. you got, yeah, the, the fourth. You, you know, you're looking at the fifth. Who's going to be that fifth that is able to disrupt? You know, to ruffle the feathers of the top four. Because for me, the top four are, are so solid defined. And you right now, I can't imagine any team being able to compete. Well, well unless again, Betty's just have an even more stellar season, and and you know, Pellegrino continues to do um, fantastic work with them, which he has been doing. So, um, Betty's could be Betty's. Well, maybe Betty's. Yeah. Betty's or Villarreal, Real, 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 I think, have the highest ceilings, even higher than Real. So, say that. If yeah, I feel like Betis point, are yes. gonna get one yeah, big player. I don't, I don't know. Mm. Betis are gonna get a Ceballos or, or Isco type figure, I think, and mm. I think that'll that'll Look, help maybe. Uh, well, if Betis get Haaland, then they could be interesting. <laughs> uh, they could be. A... But uh, no, all jokes aside, I don't know if you saw that video though. It was hilarious, Joaquin and Haaland. Yeah. Together. It was so good. And he was saying, you know, no, no space in, in Betis. He wants to come, but we, we there's no more place in space. But uh, Morales, El Comante, signing for Villarreal could be a good signing for them because you know they they need some clinical finishing sometimes, and from from their number nine with with Gerard Moreno. So sometimes with his injury issues and everything. So, yeah. Uh, but I think I, I would give the edge to Betis over Villarreal, even though, of course, I mean, look at them in the Champions League. They were they were they were great. Yeah, I agree with that. Either way, I think those are the two with the highest ceilings of doing something to disrupt, quote unquote. But I think we agreed that the mm -hmm. ultimate, the one who would disrupt the most would be Sevilla because they're, they'd be in our top four, I think. Yes. Yeah. Um, do we have anything we want to get off our chest before we wrap this one up? Um, just, I mean, I, I, I'll bring the heat. I need to, we need to find a way to do it as well where we make these... Uh, you know, kind of freestyle intros are regular, but how I could record it live because, you know, when I do the pod solo or record it on, uh, on garage band, which is also why I can kind of like compress and, uh, kind of 
would do some audio engineering on the on the sound make the quality nice but um yeah you know i'm i'm happy that that you uh enjoyed it that you liked it so much and uh, again thank you and, and to the listeners for the uh, good feedback well i think the best way to do it would be i mean there's two options one is you could just create a an intro that is just always the intro like that every time someone presses play right. on churros that's what they hear so mm. we could do that and plus you could have a free st uh and then on top of that as that intro music fades it could jump into you doing a freestyle for each pod that's fresh mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but listen i don't Did like you, uh... i saw you were having a patron discussion on the patron inbox like someone suggested hey can you do an intro and you were like you were like very enthusiastic yes I'm, I'm not even bringing it up beyond that. I just know that you know, and I know that you got to work on something and it's on you. So <laughs> I'm saying it publicly yeah, just it, to put more pressure on you. Good, good. No, I want it's welcome pressure. Also, I mean, somebody, a uh, listener once suggested or asked if he could send me a beat or beats to do to freestyle over. Uh, if that listener is listening, I, I've said it already. Uh, Again, I th this being the free version, because I mentioned it on the Patreon one. But if that person is listening, yes, send in your beats and I'll do some little freestyles for sure. We didn't talk about Riam at all. If the, if, the, if the beats are good, they got to gotta be fire. My, I'm not going to be free with some whack ass shit. Okay? Yeah, well, if it's not, if it's whack ass shit, you don't even answer. <laughs> you just let it disappear. Uh, we didn't yeah, talk about Riam yeah, at all, right? In. Yeah. No. So you gotta, you gotta. I need my well, headline. no, we did. We talked about, we talked about um, a bit of uh, Zizou and Ronaldo signing from their respective teams, forcing their <laughs> signings to Madrid. Like five seconds. Well, no, it was something. I'll have to think of something. All right. Is there not? Uh, I'm, I'm looking now. <laughs> Uh, Real Madrid is multiplying. Headline in Marca. They mm -hmm. are. Uh, La Cuadra Calafant. What is that? This is a disaster. You're grabbing uh, something from Marca at the end of the from podcast. Marca, but yeah, well, I, I'm trying to do you a favor here, man. You know, you're the mother. So you come up with a topic. I'll figure something out. Don't worry. We're going to okay. we're gonna All torture right. people trying to figure something right now. Uh, I guess right. we'll just say if you like this podcast, go over to patreon.com slash churros y tacticas. The video version of this will also be available on YouTube probably. And yeah, this was fun. This was, I really enjoyed this. I missed this, having these conversations <laughs> with you. So glad to be back I'm on a regular man. Welcome schedule. Back. Uh, yes, yes. A patron is asking if you're coming to Vegas, by the way. Are you going to come to Vegas for Classico? Somebody asked. No, there's no chance. Is it expensive? Absolutely no chance. From Spain. Well, plus I mean, somebody like uh, have Bruno cover like traveling with the team. Oh, uh, you, you, so, you can't yeah. make that pitch for that to be you or to, for you to join the team and work on a story. Mm, no, because I have to cover it in the studio. Mm. It was the same with the Australia trip asked because I have a buddy there that I wanted to see and it was like, well, no, you're not, you're not the, the pitch side reporter. So. <clears throat> would you want, like Australia is just so, I feel like to, to your body to recover from that trip would have been, it takes like a year to recover. It's so far away. Yeah. It, uh, it seems like none of, no one wanted to go on that trip, the players, no one. I think that happened like that whole thing happened while I was away, but that would have been an interesting conversation too. Anyways, uh, Diego, this is fun. We'll chat, I guess, next week and uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Peace, bro. I'm working, but thank you. Peace out, bro.